The following discussion by the Rav is not an easy topic to understand since it deals with differences between the essence of a Jew and non-Jew. Both share a basic level of soul called nefesh. Nefesh is also called the animating soul or the animal soul since it gives life to the body. God told us that we are a holy nation and holy kodesh means separate. Our purpose, our connection to God follows a different path. The Rav brings down the explanations according to the Zohar and the Arizal. Enjoy. Today we'll talk about who we are and what we are doing and how God created the world. And try to understand what our action is doing and how it affects the world and how it's working. Jerry said, the Torah said, by Vayelokim et Adam, God created the man. But in the, in the same time, he created the world. The whole world was created by God by letters. Obviously, I can say, the Hebrew letters. So, but not by the... Uh, not by the Latin letters, which is the ABC. Obviously, it's the Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, and that's the Hebrew letters. So everything in the world was created by the base of the Hebrew language, or I can say not the Hebrew language, but by the Torah's language. We call it Sfat HaKodesh, and that's basically what it is. Versus modern Hebrew. Uh, the modern Hebrew is the modern Hebrew. As I said, the basic Hebrew from the Bible, that's called the Holy language, which basically everything in the world. That's how it's come by the names of anything that we have, by names of the animals, by the names of uh, Adam, by the names of Eve, which is basically we call it Chava, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, any, any of them is everything created by the Aleph Bet. There is a, a research they made in, in Holland, in Amsterdam. They took five kids, they put it in a laboratory, no speaking any language with them, not at all. They tried to study which language they will come with to understand how the mind is worked. Apparently, happen, it sounds maybe weird, but that's what it is, all of them came with Hebrew language. Ask yourself, what the Holland people have to do with this Hebrew language? It's based on that. For us, it's very easy to say yes, of course, because the world was created in that way. The mind is working in that way. So there's no question the first language will come would be there by the Hebrew language. They generally understand, and if they brought somebody who speaks the languages, and then they understand it's coming from. So for that we to understand that everything in the world based on Hebrew language. It doesn't matter if we understand it or if we don't understand it. If somebody don't speak Hebrew, but he is praying in Hebrew language, is he doing his job? Is he moving things upstairs? The answer is yes. So how come? What does he have to do but if, if, if you don't understand? That was I was asking a question by to understand what is Adam. When you say Adam, what does that mean? Is that have a meaning behind? Or is it just a name? No more than that. The answer is definitely there is a meaning without that. What's the meaning? The soul between Adam and not Adam, that's the difference. When I say an Adam, I mean someone who has a soul with the five parts. That's what it is. But someone who is not Adam, he has only one part which is called nefesh. This is the lowest part of the soul, one part of it, 
That's exactly what they have. So if, we, if I want to describe, I said, okay, take a Jewish and non-Jewish. What's the difference? Non-Jewish have one part. That's all it is. Like the animals. The animals have only one part. The birds have one part. So that's what they are. We have five parts. Nefesh, Ruach, Jamach, Echida. Now we're talking this world, we're doing our, our work on Nefesh, Ruach, and Shama. Nefesh, Ruach, and Shama, it means body, spirit, and soul. Body is the lowest one, spirit is the second one, higher one, and the soul is higher. And then we have the single and the, and, and the birth. That's the two high parts. When the Mashiach will come, we'll talk about that. But in the meantime, it is now. When we try to understand what's our movement or action, no doubts that any action we do, we do it in the whole world, on the whole three of them, on the soul, spirit, and body. If I move my hand, do I move my hand on the spirit world? Yes, definitely yes, because it's part of me. So every action that I'm doing, I'm doing in the spirit world as well. For example, if I make a blessing, and I bless something, my blessing is working on the spirit world as well. It starts from my soul side. And I have to go through this. So every blessing I'm doing is coming from the spirit world, going to the physical world. If he's going to go, it's going to the same world. Same letters, same words that he will express it like a Jewish one. Is he doing his job? No. He's doing it only in the physical world where the highest point that he reach. So our levels of where we are in the spirit world, that's the world he's doing. So if I'll thank some, someone, I say a blessing on, on someone, and my blessing work on the spirit world, are bringing blessing from God to where he is, if you look carefully on the Bible, there are many things that the Bible allowed it to them and don't allow it to us. Don't allow it to us. For example, we was created in heaven. That's where we created. We come down to the earth, getting our skin and become physical. Where they came from. It's not the same source. If I'm in, if I can climb up and become to this heaven's level, God expecting me to be able to give a spirit life basically on that. Which the Goim he said, I'll give you on the level where you're coming from. Which level is that? There's the earth level. Let's look at that. The Bible said, whatever I allowed to the goyim, I don't allow it to you. Be careful. For example, if I'm going to single sex, it's forbidden for us. Forbidden by the Torah, it's forbidden to have a single sex life. In the other hand, if I said the goyim, they allowed to have. It means if I look at them, I said, is the Bible allowed them or not? It's allowed them, they can do. Nobody stops them from doing it. We are not allowed by our Bible to have that. You mean we have to get married? We have to get married, men and women. Right. Not a single life sex. Right. That's, that's a difference. Because if you look at that and say, is that a higher level of soul? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. When you're going down to the earth, it's when you take yourself down, lower level, from when you're really made of. Are we, we made of from heaven. It's our spirit is higher. We cannot allow ourselves to go lower and live our life from the physical world, from, from like, like the going. 
They are allowed to have it. They are coming from. They were going to. They are going to spend their life. We are differently. For later on, Bezat Hashem, after the Mashiach will come, and all that will happen, who is going to stay in the end? We. We as an Adam, as a single man on the world. What happened to the Goim? Each one go to his source where he came from. That's the reason that any place that we see, any question or any action we do, we do it in the whole three worlds. On the soul level, on the spiritual level, and on the physical level, same. When they are working only on one level. It doesn't matter which language we talk, but our soul is there. Zohar says to Rabbi Yosef Chaim and Arya Kadosh talking about that everything we do, we are doing, we are doing by thought and action. There is nothing we are doing without thought. And our thought is the meaning. Sometimes we are making the mitzvah only by, by thinking, even no action. The Torah said, God is made, he's, he's taking to calculation like we made the mitzvah physically. That's how he's going to take it. He's going to take it and think it like we already did that. Only by way of thinking that, yes, I want to do it. I didn't do nothing yet. I just thought thinking about that. How is that with the going? No. He has to do it. He has to make it. Because his mind is not on the same high level that I am. I'm coming from the source, we are coming from the source, that our, our soul level is high, so every thinking that you're doing, every thought that we have is our really on the soul level, and that's our difference. So that's the reason that we can see that during the, the, the any blessing we do, there is no doubt. So Yosef Chaim said in Kisei Melech, very interesting, he said, all our mission in our world is Birkat Anenim. This is the mission in our world. Birkat Anenim is the blessing that you do when you want to eat. Anything you eat, you bless on that. We said, why is that? What's, what's the purpose running after the bed? Because this is something you do. We fix the world by blessing everything that we eat. We're doing 12 actions on each blessing. On this 12 action, part of it, we make it pureness, pure, more pure than it was before. So every time that this soul that from the food is coming and we reincarnate it again and again and again, we make it more, few, more pure. More than that, Harry says, if you want to get the Holy Spirit, just bless all the time. Look how the Holy Spirit is not something you get it like from today to tomorrow. By simple thing, bless on what you eat and you get the Holy Spirit. How, how important is that. So our mission in our life, without it being beside of making the whole mitzvot, beside of doing this, bless what you eat. And that's, that, that's our difference from them. If you look, for example, one action we're doing, and we, we really don't understand it. We take, want to bless on the bread, to say, Berkat Amazon, uh, Amotzi, and you take the bread, and you just put it three times on the soul, and you eat it on the salt. And you really, what does that mean? Well, what's the meaning of that? Everything in the world we have to fix. But in every item we have something to fix with. If I want to fix the bread, in Hebrew it's going to be lechem, lamet chet and mem, we fix it on the same thing with the melech. Melech is the same letters like lechem. Now, the salt is never getting out of order. It's all, all, all the time. It's almost all, always good. Yet, 
no, not getting uh, humidity, is not getting any, any other thing. It's always good. If I want to fix the bread, I'll fix it by salt. But I want to put chesed. I want to give him something from the right side of good to fix the badness that you have in the bread. Because the bread has a good side and bad side, like any other things. Holy side and non-holy side. I want to get rid from non-holy side. What we do, we put it into, into the salt. But to give from the good side, to take it out, we by the chesed. Rabbi Ari says, the chesed, they have a nikud. And nikud, that's the points after, under the letters. Nikud of chesed is segol, is the three points. So we put it three times to give him a chesed into the bread to fix it, to be able to eat it. So simple. So simple. Is that work if the goy will do it? Unfortunately, no. Why? Because he can't bring the chesed. We can bring it from our soul level. We can bring it down and put it into the, into the bread. By the meaning of the action that we are doing, we bring the chesed into the bread to be able to fix it, to be able to eat it. But the guy will not do it. As long as you just put it, he like, he makes the bread salty. That's it. So that's the different. We don't, we don't have the meaning for the salty. We want to fix the bread. That's spiritually we do. That's the difference between What's us. What's wrong with the bread? Oh, the bread, eh, we said in the beginning, we came to this world because of the mistake with the snake. Everything in this world have poisoned by the snake. Everything. Meat, birds, animals, bread, fruit, everything that we eat. Everything have a poison. There is a guy, he made a research. He said, give me a DNA, whatever you have, I'll tell you if it's kosher or no. How do you know? If you, if you want, go to kosherdna.com. It's one word, kosherdna.com. And look there, there. Take the DNA. And any DNA, that, any birds or any, any animal that you have. And put it into this logarithm. Push the button. And you get, he will tell you it's kosher or not. I ask the guy, how do you know? Well, what you have in your logarithm? He said, it's very simple. We took five. DNA for, from snakes, and we compare. More DNA snakes multiplier that you have is kosher. I mean, who have the most? The cow. The cow have, I think, 14,200 multipliers of DNA snakes. That's the highest one. So you say, who is the minimum? Who is not the kosher? Except one bird that God gave us during coming out from Egypt, which we have it. But unless that, there's no question. So what, what, what we see? That everything was poisoned by the snake to be able to, for us to fix it. Why? The, po the question, the point is, we have poisoned by our soul by the snake. If somebody poisoned by the snake, how you can get rid from the poison? By the poison of the snake. The nasiob, the getting the poison out, is poison of the snake. So here it is. I'm taking the fruit that have snake poison in it. I take it into myself to take the poison of the snake for me out. That's how I'm getting the Holy Spirit. That's how I get why more I'm going to be able to get rid from the from the snake poison, I'm going to have more pureness. No no doubts. Less poison snakes that I have in my body, that's why I'm going to have more spiritual ones. That brings me to the point again, to the same point. The most important things for us get rid from the snake poison. Get more spirit 
make the blessing on everything you eat, you got the Holy Spirit. Bezat Hashem, we hope all of us will do it, and all of us will come to that, and we enjoy it, and Bezat Hashem come to the final tikkun, the Mashiach will come.